Hi everyone. Uh, it looks like uh, our one participant that we I did have very briefly has had to drop out. It may have been just due, due to unreliable internet. Um, so uh, we, this lesson really is to reflect on the uh, physics tasks that I've already given you. And uh, obviously, as per usual, I'll be uh, uploading it to YouTube so that you can download it or, or view it online uh, as per your need. So it's now 2 p.m. So I'm going to make a start. It's only going to take about 10 minutes to go through it. Uh, it's a fairly simple task. At the end, I'll be setting you some work to do. So no excuses. Make sure that you do do that work. OK, so we're looking at some questions. You should have done some reading by now on circular motion. You should by now know the formulae and the units and some of the key definitions. If you don't, I suggest you look that up again in your vision guide or in your textbook and uh, make sure you're familiar with it. Maybe go through the, uh, the remedial work that I sent uh, earlier this week. So our first question was a fairly simple one. A 700 kilogram car makes a turn at a speed of 30 meters per second with a radius of curvature of 120 meters. What is the force of friction between the car tires and the road? Um, you may need to remember a little aspect of that question later on, but really what it's asking is what's the centripetal force? So in order to work out centripetal force, you've got to think about what you're given. Um, you're given the mass, you're told that's 700 kilograms, you're given the speed, the or the tangential velocity, as it's sometimes called, 30 meters per second, and you're given the radius of 120 meters. So the formula you need is force is mass times speed squared over radius. You should be familiar with that one. It is something you're going to need to remember. Uh, you then plug in the numbers, 700 times 30 times 120 gives you an answer of 7,250. So what you've got to remember here, the bit that people forget is they sometimes forget to square the 30. They forget to square the speed. The key part, the key knowledge here is knowing this formula. Okay, so if I just put my pen on there, whoops, it's... The bit of knowledge you need is to know this formula. The centripetal force, the force required to make something continue moving in a circle, is equal to the mass in kilograms times the speed squared, speed being in meters per second, and the radius in meters. Okay, it's a standard formula in it, and the answer just comes out. So if we look at question two, it's almost exactly the same. You've got an object with a mass of 10 kilograms, so you're given the mass, you're given the radius of the circle it's moving in, and you're given the velocity of 10 meters per second. And you have to calculate the centripetal force. So it's exactly the same as before. If you're given the mass, the radius, and the velocity, or speed, then it's uh, force is mass times velocity, or speed squared, times uh, divided by 10. The answer comes out to be 100 newtons. Notice how the substitution is put in place. When you're doing exam questions, if you don't put the substitution in place like, like that, you might not get the mark. So the next one is, what is the centripetal acceleration of this object? So this is part B. So actually the acceleration, you get that from force is equal to mass times acceleration. I'll put that in as a clue up there. Rearrange to make acceleration of the subject. So the force from before is 100 divided by the 10, leaves you with 10 meters per second squared. That's how you do that one. It's a fairly simple one. I uh, hopefully you're all familiar with you're all familiar with, uh, with with that formula. Um, the next one, next question. You, we're now putting a bit of context in. So suppose you're spinning a child around in a circle by their arms. The calculate the radius, sorry, of her orbit is around you is one meter. So you take r to be one meter. Speed is one meter per second. So we take v to be one meter per second and her mass is, 20, is 25 kilograms. And what's the magnitude and direction of tension in your arm? So you're holding on to the girl, think about what direction you're, you're having to pull against. So the first thing is, is to recognize that, that tension is basically the centripetal force. And when you're given that, you can then work out uh, the rate, you can then work out from the radius, the speed, and the mass using the same formula as before, force is mass times speed squared over radius. You've got to get used to using that. Um, so the mass is 25, speed is one, one squared is one, one over one is the same. So the answer comes out to be 25 newtons. That's the centripetal force. 
the direction of tension in your arms. So the direction of tension in your arms is going to be towards the child. If you think about it, you're having to provide that centripetal force. So you'll feel the reaction force as you're trying to pull on the child. Um, which brings me neatly onto the next part of the question, 3B, which is what's the force in our arms? Well, it's Newton's third law of motion. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if you've got 25 newtons towards the girl or away from you, then the, the tension in the girl's arms is going to be towards you and it'll be 25 newtons. Okay, so it's equal and opposite. Okay, question number four. Question number four, I gave you a racing car traveling at a speed of 80 meters per second on a circular racetrack with a radius of 450 meters and you want to work out centripetal acceleration. Remember, force is mass times acceleration. So if you divide the formula for centripetal force by mass, you end up with the formula for centripetal acceleration. Um, so the acceleration, instead of, being m, instead of being force mv squared over r, it's just v squared over r, because we're dividing it by mass. Where v was 80 meters per second, r was 450. So the, um, the acceleration was 14.2. And to express the units correctly, it should be meters, seconds to the minus two, not expressed incorrectly as, as it seems to be on that particular part of the question. Next part is to work out centripetal force on the race car if its mass is 500 kilograms. Again, you're using F equals MA, the Newton's second law of motion. Okay, the mass is 500 kilograms. The acceleration is whatever you calculated to be in the previous question. And then you end up with the final answer of 7,100 newtons. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. So let's go on to the next one. So what provides centripetal force? Well, what's the question about? Well, the question is about a racing car. So a racing car is going around in a circle. What's actually pushing it around in the circle is actually going to be friction but the force of friction between the tires and the road if you think about it if that force of friction isn't enough to make it go around in a circle the car will just skid the car will you know which is what we want to go in a straight line instead which is what happens when people go around corners too fast so next question is now a little bit trickier there's a couple of bits to it um the radius of the earth is um six 6,380 kilometers. So when we're thinking about the radius in the formula, we've got to convert it into uh, meters. Uh, I believe I'm welcoming Mr. 17 here. Um, so we're calculating the velocity, calculating the velocity of the person standing on the equator due to the Earth's 24 hour rotation. So if we think about it, we want to calculate the velocity we know that the velocity is going to be given by the angular speed, the angular velocity times the radius. That's a standard formula and one that's in your book and you do need to know it. To get the angular, uh, to get the angular velocity, it's two pi over t, over the time period. So we work out the time period to be, uh, whoops, work out the time period to be uh, 24 hours times 3,600 seconds to an hour, which gives you 86,400 seconds. And then we're just using that part, B is equal to omega r. Well, if that's the case, then we're just substituting omega for our expression for omega into here. So we have the speed that, that you're standing on, if you're standing on the equator on Earth, is 2 pi divided by 8,006, sorry, 86,400, then multiplied by the radius of the Earth. So the radius of the Earth, they said, was 6,380 kilometers. But then you've got to remember, then you've got to, rem then, sorry, then you've got to remember that you're multiplying by 1,000. Okay. So you end up with about 464 meters per second, which is quite surprising, but it's actually true, okay? So that's how you do question five. The next thing to do 
is anyone so that's the first part of the question there so we want to work out the velocity of the, of the person we've done that bit so now we want to calculate the centripetal acceleration so again it's a it force is mv squared over r so we divide by m to get v squared over r that gives us acceleration so the speed is whatever we calculated before goes into uh goes into the v we've got to square it divide it by um six three eight zero 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 and we work out the ex the acceleration which comes out to be 0 0.034 meters per second squared so we calculated the centripetal acceleration but then you want to express it as a fraction of the acceleration due to gravity so to do that all you do is you divide it by the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81 meters per second squared which leaves you with 0.0034 g that's your answer but the last so you've done that bit and then we've got the last bit of the question is there any danger of flying off well if that's the acceleration pulling you towards the center of the earth that's the acceleration sort of trying to make you fly off you can see that it's a tiny tiny value compared to g so there is no danger of uh, flying off in fact that makes sense doesn't it because you see people who, who live on the equator in the tropics and the tropical countries and they don't, they don't sort of fly off every time they jump so next question five uh, question six is another difficult question there's a lot of weirdness here a lot of stuff here that you might not have heard of before but don't worry when you pick out the bits that are important it becomes easy so we've got neutron stars they're the corpses of stars left over from supernova explosions they're the size of a small city but they spin several times per second so you consider a neutron star with a radius of 10 kilometers so that's my radius so remember i've got to multiply it by a thousand to get it in meters and i've got a period of 0 0.8 seconds okay so that's my period there I have to imagine a person standing on the equator of this neutron star. So if we calculate centripetal acceleration of this person, well, first of all, it just it would do exactly the same as we did before, but this time we're given the uh, rotate the period of rotation of 0 0.8. So we know that the uh, angular velocity is 7.85 radians per second. Okay, so that gives us the angular velocity omega. So if acceleration is omega squared r, that's going to be 7.85 squared multiplied by 10,000 because you've got 10 kilometers here. So we end up with 61, sorry, 616,539. Well, round it off to two significant figures. We should end up with something like that. 6.17 times 10 to the power of five meters per second squared. So we have calculated the centripetal acceleration of that person, but now to express it as a multiple of g, we just divide it by g, which is 9.81, and we end up with 62,800g, okay, which is quite high. So that's how we do that question. And last but not least, I did tell you this would be very quick. Um, we find the minimum acceleration due to gravity that the neutron star must have. Well, the minimum acceleration due to gravity in order to keep the person from flying off, it's got to be the same value, same, same as part A. So that's pretty simple to do. That's basically how you answer the questions. Now, I know the last two questions there were quite complex, but it's, um, it, it's not something you can't do. And certainly you could do the first four. It's a little disappointed to not get anything back. Can I please, remember, please remind you, if I don't get anything back, I, I really can't... Um, I really can't mark it and I can't feed back and tell you whether, whether you're getting it right or wrong. So I try to keep things varied for you. So I'm going to give you something else to do this time. Okay. So this one is, um, is a Seneca learning app. And what I'd like you to do is go onto this website here, app.senecalearning.com forward slash dash forward slash dashboard forward slash join class and then you've got your class code which is WC1AJ548SQ. Um, so you need to go on Seneca Learn. Um, you, it literally, it's a Google search for Seneca Learn or you just type that URL in that I've just circled in red. Um, 
I'll set up a little bit of a course for you to follow. It's actually like a, a it's a series of questions about centripetal force. Uh, you answer them as best you possibly can, and it will give you instant feedback on that. It'll also give you help on things where you've been getting the questions wrong. Okay, um, please do make sure you've done that reading. This really, I really after Easter, I want to be moving on from circular motion and onto gravity because I have to combine the two topics uh, towards the end of the year. So please make sure that you have uh, that, that you've got that work done. Uh, ready for um, ready for the deadline. Okay. Any questions, anybody? Well, I've not got any questions there. Nobody's actually sent me anything. I'm just going to have a quick look in the chat just to make sure that nobody sent me a question. No, I've got no questions at all. Nothing's come back. Um, well, if you do have anything, just email me and I'll try and help you. Um, in the meantime, uh, have a good Easter holiday. Please make sure you get that work done. It's going to be really important that you continue to make the progress. Otherwise, you'll have a mountain of work to do next academic year. So please make sure you've got that done. And uh, I hopefully will see you online in the near future. Take care, everybody. Be safe. <laughs>